paper. What do you make of this? Well, I can make a house. I can make a flame. I can make a brooch. <laughs> He's just going big. He's going big at all times. At all times. Do you know the thing? And the thing, the thing that kills me with uh, the the parody movies of today. The closest one was Scary Movie, the very first one. Because that tried to do sight gags. Right. 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 And and the the parody movies today, you know, they're about you know dick jokes by actually showing it, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and and scatological stuff where it's actually you know there's poop and there's actual pee and oh look he dug up his nose and he rubbed it on the turkey you know that okay I guess you know there's there's a lot of in your face humor in airport but airport airplane. There's a lot of in-your-face humor, but there's a lot of subtle humor, you know? They have the little uh, Jesus that's in the cockpit, the little statue of Jesus in the cockpit. And, you know, first it's just a statue of Jesus. And then when it's raining, the statue of Jesus has an umbrella. And then when they're going to crash, the statue of Jesus is covered his face. And it's just, they just keep going back to it at just random times, you know? You mm -hmm. never know when it's going to come up. When it does, it's hilarious. It's brilliant. And then the, the, the newspaper stuff, like the wacky material... <laughs> Yes. Nuance. This is what is missing from a lot of movies today. Nuance. And what you say, the visual gags, show, not tell. Don't explain everything to people. Let the joke sit. Let it land first and then let it sit, man. Stop telling people exactly where they're supposed to laugh. This is, oh, oh God. And what makes me really happy, too, is I, I just love the behind the scenes stories because they wanted to shoot it in black and white. And the head of the studio just goes, okay, come back and talk to me on Monday about it, and we'll see if you change your mind. He just, the guy, the, the head of the studio just handled Zaz so well. I think it was, um, the producer was Howard Koch at the time, and he just handled these guys like, okay, yeah, sure. You should come back and talk to me Monday about it and see if you feel, he just played them, man, and it makes me so happy yeah. that they, that they just, like, these guys knew how to handle them. They, they, you know, they wanted to do a, a small plane for the whole movie, but then they made him do an airplane. But then Z the Zucker brothers snuck in like a prop plane sound for the airplane. Like there were such brats on this nice. movie doing little things. And oh, one of the funniest stories, they were talking to what Howard Koch, they built this huge airplane that shatters through this glass. And the stunt coordinator actually said that some of the first kind of like candy glass that they had ever used on set. Mm -hmm. He's like, but that falls on somebody, it hurts. So yes. they showed the scene to the producer. And he's like, you idiots, why don't you build a miniature? And then they went, what's a miniature? <laughs> and then at the end, that's why you have the miniatures. Because he's like, that's what you should do. And they're like, we didn't know. We just thought it'd be funny. Like, they just, they, 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 it, they, they literally said, what is a miniature? There it is. You know, not everybody goes to Juilliard or the yeah. New York City College of Arts and Sciences. We just want to make a movie. Shut up, jerk. You want to hear something cool? <laughs> Talk to me. Hunt Lowry was a associate producer on this film. He then worked mm -hmm. his way up through Last of the Mohicans some gigantic films, and he also recently was the producer, executive producer on Deep Blue Sea 3, and that's why it's so good. Look at you. Six degrees of, six of Deep Blue Sea. That's right, and there we just is. had the star and director, Tanya Raymond and uh, John Pogon, to talk about Deep Blue Sea 3 with us. We got John Pogon twice. He's going to get us the whole crew. The director you likes us. Me, Congratulations, man. Yeah. Of course they like you, man. You are in love with that movie, and I think that you've done better promotion for Deep Blue Sea than Warner Brothers ever did. <laughs> Like a shark fin, deepest, bluest. They said they like me because I ask weird questions. I don't do the stock. I don't do the stock questions. I end up talking about underwater chainsaws and shark fighting. Exactly, exactly. So when you had the bird, you know, <laughs> did you did you decide to choose a minor bird, or what kind of food did you feed the minor bird? Did the minor bird ever poop on anybody? So many questions. I, I'm Mark Carver. <laughs> I asked a few, I'm like, I know there's a water shortage in South Africa, and that affected Deep Blue Sea 2. Did that affect you on Deep Blue Sea 3? I was like, and how are the wineries in the surrounding area that were around Cape Town Studios? I was like, and I read that the diner there has a 3.8 out of 5 rating on Yelp. And they're like, what? Where did you hear this? <laughs> and what was your favorite shark? Yeah. <laughs> and what were his likes and dislikes? I was just confusing you know? people on there. So it's... <laughs> like, and then they just come up to you, Mark, do you want to make Deep Blue Sea 4? Yeah. And then, well, and then okay, and there it Nor is. Norbert. Get this. He's like, I can't, I can't say anything. But he went Shark Week 2022. Yes. I got an early scoop, unofficial scoop. Yes. But yeah, getting back to airplane. It's um, okay. I, I, a lot. See, a lot of a lot of stuff has been talked about, like Leslie Nielsen and his fart machine, and and um, what is it? Uh, Peter Graves and his. Oh my gosh, man. 
the Gladiator movie and oh, I've seen a girl. Man. Look, Peter Graves, when he just reveals himself to be a pedo on the low, oh my god, why why is that so funny to me? It's not supposed to be funny. But he just no, Joey's great, he can hang out here. Joey, you like movies with gladiators in them? Just wait, what? What are you talking? You ever seen a grown man make it? Wait, really? Is this going? Is this good? Oh, bad gladiator movies. Have you ever been to a Turkish prison? <laughs> really? Okay, so we're just spelling it out now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Captain Over is a crazy guy, okay? And Victor and Roger Roger, all right? Those guys, all they want to do is fly the plane, and they want Jimmy Walker to clean the windshield and also check the oil. Oh, the when he falls <laughs> off? Oh, <laughs> He lifts the hood up, you know, right. and then they, they, and then they also pay for the service with the old credit card swipey oh, machine. Yeah. And you Vic, know? Victor's funny, man, when he looks at the camera. Yes. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's beautiful. That's like I love the guy they found to clean the the windshield and do all that. His facial expressions Jimmy were Walker. gold. Oh, what? Jimmy Walker. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Walker. That was right. Jimmy... Yeah, totally. Totally. And when the uh, when the man when the man offers the woman a shot of whiskey as they're just going through hell and everybody realizes now that we might die. Would you, you would you like, you like some, some whiskey? Man? Certainly not. <laughs> and then she just pulls out some Coke and just. <clears throat> <sighs> Drinking problem. As a kid, the, the bits that were funniest to me were when, when they show the fish and they're still like, he ate around all the bones or when yes. the girl gets her, her um, IV unplugged from her and she does that weird face suck in thing. The the yes. physical gags are what really had me because, mm. you know, at 10, 12, some of this stuff is going to go over your head. But then I right. loved when I watched it at 18 and I was like, you know, the, the jello scene and other things are like, ah, yeah. And then you get yes. to, and then when you're at now about the second cup of coffee and yes. I wonder what he's, like, this movie just keeps aging really well. It's unlike like Ferris Bueller. When I was 12, I thought Ferris was cool. When I was 18, I'm like, this is the greatest guy ever. Now that I'm 38, I'm like, I don't like Ferris. It's um, Yeah. You absolutely want to punch Ferris Bueller <laughs> in the face repeatedly as an adult. Like, this guy's a jerk. And then, but Airplane gets funnier the older you get because you just, oh, man. there's different levels on each that you appreciate. All the stuff that you missed, you start to pick up as an adult, you know. Uh, the even Even as a kid, you know, they're in the bar, a bar fight breaks out, and it's just Girl Scouts. Oh, except, yeah. Except they're the most incredibly skilled fighters in the bar. The bar is full of rednecks and rogues and monsters. The girls who are fighting are the Girl Scouts. <laughs> and they managed to stretch the fight out even through the whole dance sequence. The Magumba Bar, the rough place, the seediest dive on the wharf. It's unbelievable. Oh, man. And then uh, at Daiquiri? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I have to go to Daiquiri. And I love that bar scene, too. Just all the extras da dancing. The guy gets stabbed in the back. He throws her in the air. Then she jumps into his arms. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they throw the jacket at him. Like, he throws the jacket. And then Robert Hayes gets it thrown back right in his face. Yes. Just, like, and then I, I still I still do that. I have a drinking problem from, like, you know, Nam. And then the sweating yes. gif. Like, it's, it's a really, man, there's just, I know we, we're just saying bits about this but it's just one of those movies that is just people complain about it nowadays though they're kind of like oh like, really yeah i see articles five moments that are funny and five moments that went too far I'm like this was oh, 1980 okay. like there's context and i'm not saying it makes it okay all the time because there's context but yeah this was 80 like the 80s were crazy this this movie is not racist i'm gonna say that this movie is not racist this movie is not anti-semitic it might be a little sexist for sure yeah but everything everything here is in service to the joke. There is nobody who looks better than someone else. There's no particular class or group that looks better than the other in this movie. Everybody looks stupid. Everybody <laughs> is stupid. That's the whole point of this movie. Nothing is to be taken seriously in this movie at all. This movie is the definition of punching up. Mm -hmm. All the men are incompetent. And for any one of you who might feel super woke listening to this, all of the straight white men are incompetent in this movie. Relax, okay? Don't be crazy. Don't go after airplane. There is no one here who it's just, oh, these people are stupid. That's why this joke is funny. No, man. Not at all. And this, this is punching up the you're, movie. You're really... I love what you said about Strange Love than this, because there weren't too many 
this was quite a different film at the time, I would say, because yeah. in the late 70s, right, early 80s, there were, it was kind of dominated by the Landis type humor, where there's yeah. Animal House, there's uh, Blues Brothers, there's Caddyshack, which are all I extremely popular films, but right. subtle they ain't. Or no, like not. Deadpan, not they're not. They were not dry at all. Or vacation type stuff. I mean, that's dry. Chevy Chase had a really offbeat sense of humor in those first couple movies. But it, it yeah. was kind of a would you, I don't know about revelatory because Doctor Strange had already done that, and there were dry con like being there. I don't know. Oh, actually, I think being there came out after Airplane, but just with the Chauncey the Gardener and the absurdity of Peter Sellers. Well, but the thing is, this this movie really sticks to its conceit that it is not only a parody of Zero Hour, but at the time. You know, there was Airport 79, Airport 77. There were these, there there was this really creepy vibe with airplane movies. Uh, George. Yeah. Was it, is it, not George C. Scott. Uh, it was uh, Frank Drebin's partner in The Naked Gun. Oh, George gosh. Kennedy? Yeah, George Kennedy. Yeah. Cool Hand Luke. Right. So he was the airline pilot on just horrific airline incidents. Somebody had a a bomb they were going to smuggle on a plane or somebody was going to Airplane. hijack the plane or the engine blew up or, oh, snap, th there's a hole in the side of the plane because reasons, you know? And these were straight thriller drama films, and they're freaky as hell. I remember as a kid, I was about to go on an airplane, just like, just like in the movie Airplane, where they're watching an airplane crash. I watched one of those movies on Channel 11, WPIX, NYC, before I got on a plane as a kid. And, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the plane might blow up. All right, now I'm going to Holland, you know? <laughs> so this this movie comes up. It's totally making fun of Zero Hour, but it's also making fun of those disaster movies. And those disaster movies just came to an abrupt end. And they were like two and a half hours long, all of them. Yeah. But they had, what, Towering Inferno. And yes. then, uh, oh, man, Airplane. There's the Poseidon Airport. Adventure. Airport. Airport. Yeah. Poseidon Adventure. Yes. Yeah. Just pe people getting wiped out. And then this one comes out, which Dude. is its ultimate silliness. Yes. Yes. And then there's the sequel to the Poseidon Adventure, Poseidon Adventure 2, you know, <sighs> like beyond the Poseidon Adventure. We need to go under the sea so that we can rob the Poseidon's bank because there's no other easier bank to rob in the world than one that's on the bottom of the ocean in a collapsing hulk. You okay, gotta, buddy. You got to hear this. 1980 comedies, 9 to 5, Private Benjamin, Airplane, Caddyshack, History of the World, Part 1, and Blues Brothers. Mm. That's a pretty stacked lineup. It really is. It really is. But Airplane's the only one. Say that list again. Uh, 9 to 5, mm -hmm. like, Private Workplace Benjamin. Comedy. Workplace comedy, basically. Caddyshack, Slobs Snob versus... versus Snobs. Yep. Mel, uh, History of the World, Part 1. Mel Brooks. Yeah. And then Blues Brothers. Okay. So, Airplane... And History of the World, those are basically the only two that are parodies. Yeah, it's good to be the king. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Part two, Blue, or part one, which I love, History of the World, part one. Blues, Blues Brothers never did it for me, man. I tried. I I, I couldn't get into it, man. I was I, I did not find it hilarious that, uh you know, Belushi and Aykroyd were singing the blues. Uh, mm -hmm. I did, I don't know what was so funny about that. <laughs> I'll try and watch it again as an adult. The car remember, crashes are cool. Yes, okay. That's about it. That's kind of what I loved. Because I just remember thinking to myself, a lot of cars are being wrecked. <laughs> and there was a thrill to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you oh, know, I, I think of all these films that come out. And, you know, 81 was Stripes. And 82, like, was Porky's. Like, there's still a yeah. lot of cult classics here. But this one, this one's just, it's. I think it's still, it's still quoted today. I mean, it, the gifts are still shared today. The surely you can't, like, wait. Yeah, surely you can't be serious. I mean, of course, it's infiltrated society mm -hmm. i think this film mm -hmm. and it hasn't really mm -hmm. gone anywhere no not at all and you know that people who grew up watching airplane went to write the simpsons and stuff like that i would love to hear conan o'brien's take on how airplane just warped his mind you know <laughs> because the conan o'brien hits me as a guy who would watch airplane and just decide okay this is what i'm doing with the rest of my life mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm going to do stuff like this you know i was i was just going to say and just the dialogue how soon can you land i can't tell you can tell me. I'm a doctor. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, I'm just not sure. Well, can't you take a guess? <laughs> well, not for another two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? <laughs> the hospital? Yeah, a place where you go to blah, blah, blah. Right, can you, can <laughs> that's you, not important right now. <laughs> yeah, can, can you sum this up? Like, why? Like, what's the... What about this movie 
has made it so endearing over the last, what, 41 years. 